Hey guys, today I want to make a short video on a couple of things that I'm interested in. But before I get into that, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in uh, with me and Mr. Wu. You know, he certainly enjoys it and we have a great time entertaining you guys with some old cameras and, and lots of storytelling. And his knowledge for vintage cameras, uh, film cameras, is just immense. And um, I want to thank you guys for helping out and giving us a good time so we can share all these cool information regarding these old cameras. Now today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my camera and what I shoot. And uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, I have a background of photojournalism and I shot for AFP and AP um, for some pretty big stories and shot all kinds of different things from all oh, sports to uh, political affairs to riots to one of the biggest story which I got a scoop for was the big tsunami and earthquake of 2004, December 26, in which uh, we were able to scoop out uh, all the other um, wires at that time because I was the only uh, PJ uh, working in Phuket at the time. So uh, just a little bit about um, how this works as far as the photographers. I used uh, Nikon for my basic my entire career. Everything from the professional F5 all the way up to the well, right up to the Z9. And the reason being is they're just rock solid. And I've gotten uh, hundreds of front page uh, copy on major newspapers throughout the world from CNN to BBC to the Washington Post. In those cases, you cannot miss a shot. Your equipment has to be extremely dependable. So Nikon has always been my go-to equipment and today of course uh, with the mirrorless system going and the Z9 was launched that's well what can I say I don't need to debate on that <laughs> I know what it can do and how reliable the brand is so it's, I've been using it and I've been doing a lot now I do a lot of assignments uh, and self assignments overseas Right now, I'm based here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, so it gives me access to a lot of uh, places around Asia. And currently, I've been traveling to Mongolia to cover Western and Eastern Mongolia, uh, their culture and their heritage, and especially the Eagle Festivals uh, for the last oh, four or five years. And the environment over there is, is extremely harsh, minus 30 minus 20 degrees and my z9 was just flawless i must say the other cameras that i've used in the past there as backup has failed me um for one um, i did bring a hostel blog well that can't that packs up at 10 degrees so that, that's a that's a no-go for me and um so I use predominantly my full frame Nikon Z9. The battery will last me for days, even in minus 30 degrees temperature. So it never failed me at all. So I got some incredible shots uh, using that. Now I also have uh, a um, medium format, which I use because I feel I need the 14 bit for more <clears throat> more elaborate type pictures and pictures that I like that I, I want to be made into large print. So <clears throat> in that case, I, I use uh, like a Fuji uh, GFX. Now this is a GFX 100 type uh, Mark II, but uh, before I had the 100S. So basically very similar. And these are very robust and they can stand the temperature at minus 20 minus 30 degrees and give you that 16-bit 
image that you need. So um, that's what I predominantly use for for all my work related uh, gear. Uh, the others, uh, of course, the Z lenses. I have at least nine nine of those, and my favorite is the, as I mentioned before, is the Plana. Uh, reason being that uh, I was a I'm able to get some very uh, interesting images by using the bokeh in either the foreground or the background to create a, a framing that's very appropriate and creates an, a very unique image, which I like, especially when I'm doing uh, outdoor shots, uh, lifestyle shots, and where I need to be able to do it quickly and without hesitation. So it's um, ability to track the eye tracking with the Z9 and the 1.8 uh, lens and the 135 gives me a bit of a distance which is perfect for my needs and whacking off uh, 20 frames per second is uh, is great just fabulous so those are my uh, go-to cameras but uh, I wanted to mention that uh, I am a uh, and have been a Nikon user throughout my career because of the fact that it never fails me. <clears throat> uh, I can't say that for the other brands because uh, I really never used them. Although I did about 25 years ago use a, use a Canon, uh, I can't remember what it was, EOS one. And one of the first digital cameras was a Kodak 2000. That really doesn't count because that was like light years or light years ago. So anyway, I uh, just thought I'd mention that and let you know that we got some great videos coming up. I hope you enjoy with Mr. Wu and myself. And just let me know in the comments what what, what you guys would like to see. Something interesting, a particular brand or or a particular uh, genre of, of, of photography. And since we live here in uh, Malaysia, there's some really interesting things to take pictures of. And uh, I was talking to them about even, even going out in the field and using some of these cameras. Um, so I don't know if you're interested in that. Uh, we do have some other interesting things like, um, I think we might do a video on using uh, old light meters, you know, Seconics and Minolta's and Gaussian uh, light meters. So for those of you who are interested in that. And I could <clears throat> give you some tips on taking photojournalism type pictures because I know a lot of people are interested, but it is kind of a mystery on what is a photojournalist? What do they do? How do they do it? How do they look at things? Um, what is it that, what's it take to, to take a compelling image that photo editors are going to use for, 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 the, for the copy for the next morning? And how does it fit? Because we uh, PJs think differently. We look at the world differently. And you have to look at it differently for the market. It's for its intended viewers. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, let, let me know. I've got uh, all kinds of tricks and tips that you can do. Simple, some don't even cost money, you know. Uh, for example, if you like a particular photographer, a particular genre like fashion magazines, or you want to do runway or, or fashion, get a copy of the Vogue magazine. Study it. Who takes the pictures? Look at the lighting. What is it that they're doing? How do they take images to be able to hit that spread on the on a front cover or it, or a full page shot? So these are the things. We even other magazines such as um, oh Nat Geographic. What is it the photographer sees and what's he looking at? And these are important. What what makes that picture? come alive. Remember, your picture is important because the reader is going to look at that picture first, then read the copy. It's not the other way around.
just to let you know. Believe me. Uh, so if there's anything like that, just leave it in the comments and uh, I'll be more than happy. And like and subscribe and uh, we'll bring you more material. Uh, there's one thing that I don't do is I don't do reviews because there's plenty of that. It's just, for me, it's just practical ex experience. I, I use the gear that I, I want or need. And then if it delivers, then I like it. The technical part, I leave that up to the to the other guys to review. But I don't get caught up in the dogma. I know what I want. I know what I can do. And I know what I need to get the job done. That's all. That's all I need. I don't need to know all the fancy specs, uh, the videos, and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything to me. As long as I got the picture. Remember, my pictures go on either the web or they go on print. And you don't need, or the editors don't want you to send a hundred megabyte file size. Otherwise, that's it. You're out. And you're only as good as your last picture. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. And we'll have a good time. All right? Take care.